scar tissue is much better. But welcome to church. It is four after. I'm sorry I was late. I was talking to Joe and let time get away from me. We have, uh, we usually try to go through our prayer request in here and on Wednesday nights as well. Unspoken, uh, Phil just added one to the unspoken list. Uh, Toby Smith is a young wounded warrior who uh, I tried to minister to while he was at lawn stool. And uh, they first told him he was going to go to Walter. Well, they first told him he's going to have surgery there at lawn stool. And then they told him that he was going to go to, he has a back injury. They told him he's going to go to Walter Reed and have the surgery. Then they told him he's going to go home to have the surgery. So he was going to fly to uh, wherever the C-17s go from here, uh, Dover maybe, and then from Dover to Mississippi, and, and he would be, he would muster out and take care of it on a civilian because he's been in 20 years. And this is probably going to end his career, the back injury. And uh, anyway, so now they tell him he has to spend 90 days at Fort Stewart, Georgia. Uh, so he's not, not too excited about that. That's just, that's about an eight hour drive from anybody who would come and see him or visit him or whatever. So. Uh, I'd like for us to continue to pray for him. Um, I'm sorry? It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's in the neighborhood of Savannah, though, right? It's about an hour away. Oh, is it that far away? Yeah, it's about an hour. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he when he flew, I don't know who saw the picture or not, but when he flew, you know, he's on one of those boards on the plane. He takes a picture like this. Uh headed to uh, stateside, and then he sent me another one when he was headed to Fort Stewart. Anyway, bless his heart. Uh, he's there, and uh, turns out one of his pastors is actually, y'all have heard my testimony multiple times how uh, in my teenage and 20s I was rather rebellious, and there was a, a little little bitty man, a former airman. His name was Mike Fondren. And Mike Fondren came by my workplace uh, every sometime between Wednesday and Saturday and he'd invite me to church on Sunday and Monday he'd come back and tell me what I missed and the next weekend he would invite me to church and Monday he'd come tell me what I missed and uh, anyway uh, very thankful for Mike Fondren though we've fallen out of touch his uh, but Mike Fondren was at one time his pastor he lives in a little town called Manti but uh, I think um, Mike pastored at Matheston, which is the next little town over, uh, kind of like Cornwall and whatever's beside it, I would assume. But anyway, uh, it's kind of nifty how small worlds. And then his commander in Kuwait um, used to stand on the sidelines. She's a PT, a physical therapist, or she in the civilian world she was. Uh, and she used to stand beside me on the sidelines. She was there when both of my boys got injured in a football game, different games. But anyway, kind of a small world. Uh, praying for the leading and laboring saints here at uh, uh, Heritage, uh, the boldness to witness, the wisdom as to how and when, uh, the gumption, and, and really I think the guts to see the battles around us that the Lord will let us win, uh, that he will win through us is probably a better statement. Still praying for the Garza family. Mike is here and his family's in California, and any of us who've been separated from my family know how difficult that can be. Um, anyway, the good news for Mike is they are going to extend his career. He thought he was going to have to medically retire, and he didn't want to do that. And so he's going to get to serve another and complete his 20 anyway. But he's ready for them to give him a new duty station so the family can get back together. Uh, praying for lagging saints, we have a list of people that uh, are associated with the church who haven't been here in a while. We have a long list of lost people. Uh, Rainer, Inga, Eric, Ralph, Thomas, Michaela, Samira, Dan Treadwell in Florida, uh, one of Denise's co-workers. Um, Kayla is a young lady in Oklahoma, and we really, um, if you've been around the church long, you know some people have a profession, but you don't really see the possession. Uh, that's probably what people would have said about me in my 20s, so we don't know if she needs to be saved or if she just needs to get right. But uh, let's pray for Kayla and Will, uh, Randy Burge, Hayden Payne, Marius, uh, Alex, uh, Mrs. Seth Cheney in Mississippi, 
uh, Kylie, which is uh, Kira's sister, and many other friends and co-workers. Anybody have somebody they want to add to that? All right. Uh, pray for Heritage. Pray for the pastor. Um, those of you who have known me long, I think you probably know I'm preaching a little differently these days. Not preaching a different doctrine, but maybe a little different style. And I believe it was the Lord that moved me to do that. So I thank you to for praying for me in that and i wish you would continue to pray we have been praying for uh more than a year now almost two for people to be encouraged visitors to get in and fit in and the lost to be saved and uh we're seeing all of those things so let's continue to pray uh you know the bible tells us in galatians to not be weary in well-doing we shall re reap if we faint not all right so we want to not faint amen we want to pray for our sister churches uh, there are nine of them, eight of them here in Germany who, like us, minister almost, uh, well, none of us minister completely to the American military family, but that is the main gist of all of our ministries, uh, all of the churches here. And they're in various age. I think this uh, may be the oldest one in Germany at uh, um, 53 years old. Uh, coming up on 54 in um, March. But uh, all of these churches from Rhineland, I think Rhineland's in the neighborhood of 40 years old. In fact, uh, you know, the Sakuras are about to PCS. Um, and um, I've been trying to get them in touch with the church there where they're going to. And I managed to do that. Uh, there's actually two churches there, so they can kind of see which one the Lord would have them be a part of. One of them, the one that's much closer to where they'll be living. Um, I actually know somebody who's in the church. I I sent him a, a text. I said, man, I remember when I was in high school and you were married with three children, but now I look older than you do. Uh, he's uh, He led the singing when I was in high school, and he's leading the singing there. He got saved at Rhineland uh, 40 years ago, 1983, he got saved there. Uh, so anyway, we want to pray for our sister churches. We have um, uh, 17 missionaries that we support, 18 missionaries that we support. And uh, the Lord was gracious in our missions conference. We had uh, Faith Promise come in to cover all of that. So we want to continue to pray for them. We want to pray for uh, families. Um, we have three that we've been praying for for quite some time uh, to see a family completely reconciled. Um, we've got a couple of different families on here where there's been an unwanted divorce. And uh, there's another one where I know the husband is uh, deployed and seems to have uh, found a replacement, we might say, on deployment, which is rather... Uh, unscrupulous in my estimation but anyway we want to pray for that family a uh, young family in Mississippi I taught the mom when she was in high school I taught her senior English now she's like 31 32 and three kids um, praying for her husband praying for Jake Harrison which is a uh, the ch younger child of a couple of friends of ours and then uh, one morning this week, I think it was Friday morning, uh, I sent out my devotional kind of early for a holiday weekend. And a boy in Mississippi texts me right back. And I'm like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. What are you doing up? And he said, well, they put me on night shift, uh, and I need your prayer. I'm like, your own night shift. He said, yeah, I just came home and found another man in my house. He was hiding in my children's bedroom. Thankfully, they were at my parents' house for the holidays. He said, I have to, uh, I got to confess to you, that old Marine came out, and I, I beat him pretty soundly. Uh, he said, but it is 30 degrees in Mississippi, so I gave him a ride to his car, which he had parked like two miles away and walk to the man's house. Anyway, you don't need to know his name. Everybody in here, man or woman, knows that that is a terribly stressful situation. And his prayer request, I thought, was amazing. 
he said, pray that I steward this trial well. I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, having known him for some time, it's, it's not the first time uh, that his wife has been unfaithful. And it's, I can't imagine the, the stress with that. I also can't imagine if, if he needs to do something differently, if this is continuing to happen anyway. Let's just remember uh, that, that family there. Uh, uh, that, that would be a terrible thing to find out any time, but to find out on, your, on, on a holiday that you're supposed to be giving thanks, it might be a little challenging to be thankful. So let's pray for this young man. He's not in the Marine Corps anymore, but you know, once Marine, always a Marine kind of thing. Praying for our uh, military people. We have several, have some names I need to add here who started coming to the church. Uh, we've got several DOD contractors, which pretty much makes up everybody in the church but Joe, right? Uh, as far as active duty and DOD uh, employees or spouses of the aforesaid. Uh, praying for our military in Poland and Ukraine, Israel, and other hot spots. Uh, health requests, we've got a long list here. I'm not going to read them all, um, but uh, and there's really nothing added to that, so the same health request before. And praying for our schools, I think here and uh, in the States, it's pretty obvious that we need the Lord to work in the schools, and um, uh, homeschooling is an answer, but it is not the only answer. And I say that not because I desire that anybody put their kids in the public schools, but you do have to pay attention. It needs prayer when 80 some odd percent of our U.S. citizenry are products of the public schools. So um, I can't blame it all on the schools, but clearly we see the schools need to be prayed for, right? Uh, we still have some praises on here uh, with church growth and people getting in and fitting in and uh, such as that. Anybody have anything they want to add? Okay. Okay, my buddy uh, Stephen Lamont said that Thanksgiving, obviously, those of you who don't know, Stephen Lamont has been diagnosed with terminal uh, cancer. It's on his liver, his pancreas, and I forget what all it's metastasized to. But anyway, he said, obviously, uh, it was different than any Thanksgiving he'd ever had, but it was a good Thanksgiving. So his, uh, his attitude just, it's very convicting. <laughs> It's very convicting to me. Uh, it just has a great attitude. But anyway, anybody else? Yeah, I need you to go turn that heat off. Just turn it to summer because I'm dying up here. Anybody else? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all of these uh, uh, that have gathered out here today, Lord. We do pray for these various requests from the unspoken, Lord. Some of the unspoken requests are health requests. Some of the unspoken requests are health requests for people elsewhere. Some of the unspoken requests are for lost people. Lord, we just pray that you'd have your will in each of those. We do pray for our church, Lord, and we thank you uh, for such a sweet uh, Thanksgiving service we had on Tuesday night, Lord. Maybe the, maybe the sweetest one I've ever been in, Lord. It was just it was a great blessing to be here in your house, Lord, and uh, the discipleship after that went very well. We pray that you would continue to work there. Lord, we pray for the lagging saints. Uh, I think of you in this morning and others who haven't been here in, in uh, a long time, Lord. And we just pray that you would work in their hearts, Lord. I think of Miss Caroline and others. Uh, Lord, just have your will and way in their lives, Lord. And I pray that they would have the good sense to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we do pray for this long list of uh, lost people, Lord. We are thankful for uh, the... 
the truth of Scripture, that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, Lord. And I pray that you would help us each to live our lives as the patterns uh, that you'd have us to be so that people can follow us to thee and so that believers can follow us to a deeper relationship with thee, Lord. We just beg you to work there as only you can do. We do pray for uh, the church, Lord, and we thank you for all the good things that we see going on here. Lord, we thank you for Rhineland and v Spotten and Onspike and, and the various... Uh, uh, other churches here in in Germany. We pray that you would continue to work there, Lord. Uh, I know that uh, uh, some of these pastors are are aging. Uh, several of them are uh, in their seventies and others in their sixties, Lord. And I just pray that you would uh, give them health until you uh, bring somebody in to uh, be trained to take over, Lord. I thank you for the privilege. Uh, and the possibilities before us as we try to train Jeremy for the ministry, Lord. I pray that you would just uh, uh, guide me, guide him, uh, Lord. And uh, you know the unspoken there uh, concerning the Institute, Lord. I pray that you'd have your will in that. Lord, we do pray for uh, Brother Sly and um, Brother John Radank specifically, who we know are both in their 70s, and we pray that you would give them continued health, Lord. We pray for uh, the various missionaries we support, Lord. Some of them are older and are filling in here and there from Chris in, in Japan to uh, Brother uh, Ron in Japan and other places, Lord. And we thank you for their continued service, Lord. But we pray that you would raise up uh, men to uh, serve you in, in such capacities, Lord. We do pray for uh, these various homes, Lord. And I pray for my buddy in Mississippi. You know uh, what he's facing and uh, you know what he needs to do personally and what his wife needs to do, Lord. Uh, we pray specifically right now for those two little children, Lord. I can't imagine the, the difficulty of, of trying to raise kids in such chaos, Lord, and I pray that you'd have your will there. Uh, again, uh, we don't even know how to pray for it, Lord. I, I thank you uh, that your word teaches us when we don't know how to pray that both the Holy Spirit and the Son are making intercession for us and they know what the perfect will of God is and we commit these situations to you, Lord. And uh, Lord, I, I think of Brad and, and Dan who've gone through unwanted divorces and how difficult that might be. And I just pray that you would strengthen those men, Lord. I think of Chris, Lord. You know who Chris is. And uh, Chris, who's probably going to go through a divorce, Lord, and uh for all outward appearances, it's his fault. And uh, I just pray that you would reconcile that family if it's possible. And if it's not possible, Lord, I pray again that somehow your name would be glorified through that, Lord. And I know his kids, one's grown, one's almost grown. But again, Lord, I know this is a difficult situation for them as well. I pray that you'd have your will there in that. I pray for Eric as he tries to stand in the gap there, Lord, uh, at the... Uh, at those institutions where Chris was a part of it, Lord. I pray that you just have your will there, Lord. Uh, we pray uh, knowing that the devil will walk past our doors uh, a thousand times or more, Lord, trying to find an opening, Lord. Uh, and I just pray that you would help us all, Lord, the, the, the attacks and the temptations of the devil come in various times and various forms and even in harmless things like looking at... Uh, uh, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, Lord, and, and nastiness can be brought before someone's eyes just in, in, in not even in an intentional, but in a in an accidental uh, click this to read that and something else totally different comes up, Lord. And we just pray that you would protect us all from such temptation and such uh, diversions from uh, thy truth, Lord. And we pray this morning for these various health requests. We do thank you that uh, uh, Sue is able to come off of that health request, Lord. We pray uh, for these various military men who are on deployments and who are active duty and military ladies as well, Lord. We pray that you'd have your will there. Just work, uh, Lord, in our country, Lord. I, I still believe, I know people said it uh, 40 years ago, but I, America's too young to die, Lord, and there's such 
foolishness going on. We, we who have discerning hearts and who know your word know apart from a move of God, our country is finished, Lord, and we just pray that you would move, move in us. Help us to hoist ourselves to catch the winds of revival, Lord. Help us to be humble. Help us to be praying and seeking your face. And, Lord, help us to live lives of repentance, Lord, that we might be a pattern for others to follow to thee and into a closer relationship with thee. For it's in Christ's name we ask it all. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see if we can't get to our Sunday school lesson. I've got about 20 minutes to give you a hopefully a 20-minute lesson. Amen. I'm going to start with an open-ended question and see what you think. Uh, I'm going to give you a closed-ended question first, and then, no, I think it'll be an open-ended question. When I say that our country is a microwave society, what do I mean by that? Our society has become a microwave society. Joe, you're the only one with your hand up, so I'm going to call on you. Because uh, doing, uh, wanting everything to be done fast. Wanting everything to be done fast. So how does that, this is again for everybody, how does that affect our parenting and pastoring and things of that nature? Boy, it overwhelms me when y'all all talk at once like that. Mm. It's true. Sometimes we want our children to automatically grasp things that we have had a lifetime to come to understand, you know. Um, uh, my, well, I shouldn't say which one. One of my sons sent me a song and, uh, and some tender words with the song. And one thing in the song was the advice that I didn't want has somehow sunk in. Okay, and I think that's true for all of us. We know growing up, uh, you know, our parents said things and we thought they were crazy. And then as we, especially, you know, your, your dad knows everything when you're five. And when you're 15, well, he's beginning to lose it a little bit. And by the time you're 18, most people think their parents are just ridiculously outdated and know nothing. And somewhere between 25 and 30, we come to our senses and realize how smart they are. All right. Uh, what? Well, those things are definitely tied together. You can't be wise without some intelligence. But wisdom, I understand what you're saying, and I think you understand what I'm saying. I think our society wants to reduce parenting to rules. We want to reduce it to, to correction and discipline. Parents give rules. Children break rules. Uh, we give appropriate uh, discipline, uh, which is both an announced and, and meted out. But... Today, I want us to discuss a deeper communica communication that flows beneath that surface level. Everybody's family should have rules. They should have correction, uh, uh, discipline, and encouragement. But underneath that, you have rebuke, you have entreaty, you have warning, you have teaching. And something, one particular thing I think we, we fail to do often is you have prayer. And prayer is an integral part of pastoring and parenting. Uh, last week we started to talk about this. Communication is a two-way street, right? But we also need to vary uh, our style to the situation and to the person. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.14, if you want to turn there with me, I'm going to read two verses from 1 Thessalonians 5. Uh, and it kind of addresses this different communication for different people, you know. There, whether we're talking about adults or whether we're talking about, uh, you know, toddlers or whether we're talking about, you know, adolescents or uh, preteens or whatever the case may be, um, we have to vary our 
conversation. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, the scripture says, We exhort you. Exhort is to is a, is a very deep encouragement, okay? Uh, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient towards all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So you see at least three different things there. Warn, comfort, and support. And then you have be patient. And in this case, oftentimes when you see the word patient in Scripture, it is not talking about uh, the calmness that a grandparent might uh, extend to a... Uh, um, grandchild but it's talking about an endurance like a, a marathon um, or maybe even more than a marathon I, I saw yesterday where an American ran a hundred I want to say it was a hundred miles in four hours and 48 minutes I might be wrong I know he averaged a five minute mile and it was like running multiple marathons back to back I think they compared it to running uh, four marathons back to back. It must have been two marathons back to back. Maybe it was 50 miles, but because the time doesn't add up. But either way, hey, I used to be able to run 10 miles. I don't know that I've ever been able to run 26 miles and to run two times that and to maintain a five minute and you know, under six minute mile on that whole thing. That is the patience that we typically talk about. But here we are talking about that calmness of spirit. So when you think of encouragement and comfort, what do you think of? As a parent, how, how, do you, how would you encourage or comfort your children? Boy, it overwhelms me when y'all all talk at once like that. We'll lift them up. Help them work through it. You know, People were amazed when our kids were little, I give all kudos to Denise about this, that they dressed themselves when they were very young, you know. But when they looked foolish because of the clothing that they had chosen, she didn't blow them out of the way. You can't wear that. You look stupid. Now, Nathan especially, man, I mean, he would put some stuff together, you know. But Denise would say something like, okay, son, you got to change the shirt or change the shorts. You cannot wear those together. And he would, you know, she was very encouraging with her words, but yet she did correct him, okay? She did. There, but there was, it's a, there's a comfort in the correction, you know? Uh, uh, maybe you could, act, did you dress yourself? And then give them the privilege of talking about it. And then point to better choices, better processes, better appearances, etc. But that's encouraging and comfort. I think of, I'm very thankful for my parents, but, but they were kind of over the top on grades when I was a boy. Uh, my mama's probably listening, uh, but uh, or she's not listening now. She will later. But uh, So I'm not mad at you, mama. But uh, in seventh grade, I remember... Uh, she uh, gave me a lecture. I told you the story a couple weeks ago, I'm sure of it, uh, about I could have made 100 when I made a 99 for the six weeks average. I'm like, it's, it's an average, you know. But <clears throat> at the same time, for my own children, I tried to encourage them, and if they did their best, I tried to be happy with that, and yet encourage them to to strive harder if i didn't think they did their best we would encourage them hey i'm glad you did that much but you need to do more i don't know what it is it's not true with girls today this is part of why we started man church and wow it is not true with girls but with guys there's almost a glory in being stupid okay guys this is 15 years ago when I was teaching school in Mississippi, guys would brag about how poorly they did, okay? And so we had to combat that, and sometimes we combat that with encouragement, correction. Um, so we looked at encouragement and, and comfort. Let's look at correction. Children aren't stupid, 
we need to be consistent. If we're not, they're going to learn how to play the correction game. So we have to be careful to discern if they're playing the game, okay? What do I mean by that? How can a child play the correction game? I'm sorry, what? Well, that would be a good thing if they looked forward to see what the right thing is, and that's really not what I'm, I'm looking for. If you've seen Home Alone 2, the older brother Buzz really plays the correction game when he gets up and he gives his, his apology to the whole family and then said something really smart to his brother. He was playing the game, okay? That's what we're talking about. And if we're not careful... Uh, kids can play the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment here, and I'm going to read you 18 verses of Scripture. Uh, no, I'm not. Hold on. Look, in Proverbs chapter 9, the Bible says, uh, He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Why? Because the scorner is a cynic, and he won't receive any correction. He knows everything. He that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, by what? By wisdom. Thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear uh, sh shalt bear it. Sometimes children can, they can apologize at just the right time and in just the right way. And it really does take a discerning parent to see that they're playing a game and that they're, they're not genuinely sorry. All right. Um, so we have encouragement, we have correction, we have rebuke. That is a strong correction. What would you, so, so you have the, the, the correction is when, hey, you, maybe you think this child is playing games with you and they're not serious, and so you've got to discern through that. But rebuke is, do we have free speech in this country? Mm -hmm. Are there any limits on free speech? Within polite society, there are limits on free speech. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have the, the ability to say something, but just because it passes through your ears doesn't mean it needs to exit your mouth, right? And so if you hear your child say to another child, you're fat, I don't like you, hey, that, that, that's just not acceptable. That requires a strong rebuke. Um, but then you have entreaty, it's kind of the opposite, and that's a begging and an earnest. We're not talking about like the beggar on the street corner. We're talking about the parent who loves his child, and he knows Jesus, and he knows where this child, uh, the road this child is on uh, could very well end up. I know when I was a boy, my dad used to tell me, where's that road going to take you? He used to ask me, I guess, where's that road going to take you, son? And try to help me see that while what I was looking at, because basically most young people, most young people, help me, Lord. Have a why can't I attitude. Well, why can't I do that? And they want to see it in black and white. I mean, when I was a kid, um, I started smoking pretty young. Of course, I was wise enough to hide that from my parents because I didn't want to die. Um, but I started smoking pretty young, and when the subject would come up and there would be a debate, I'm like, well, where does it say not to use a cigarette? There's the word cigarette's not even in the Bible, right? I mean, we get into these arguments like this with people. And parents have to be discerning to see where that road is going to go. There are things that my dad said to me in the early 80s. Where's this road going to go, son? And, and the one thing I'm thinking I feel, it didn't have anything to do with John. It was somebody else. And he's just, he's using a teachable moment. Look at that. 
that I can't I can't put my finger on why that's not right, but I don't like where that road's going, son. Now that that person that he was pointing to is a very famous person, uh, uh, and he said I don't I don't like the I don't like the road they're on. Today that same person who still professes to be a believer has become an ordained minister, even though they don't meet the qualifications of multiple points of not meeting the qualifications uh, given in 1 Timothy chapter 3 or Titus chapter 1. And beyond that, they have, as an ordained minister, performed marriages that the Bible says is not a marriage and, and gathered people around and, and kind of shamed anybody who said it was wrong, okay? So this so virtual signal, virtue signaling signaling, all right, that people do today. So how, how do we do this, this entreaty, this begging? Well, we find, I think, a very good example of it in Solomon's writing of Psalm twenty, of Proverbs 23. The scripture says, My son, give me thy heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. So that's a two-edged thing there. Give me thine heart. And let thine eyes observe my ways. So what do I have to be? If I'm going to say to my children, give me your heart and look at how I live, what have I got to be? A good example, a model, a pattern is the word I've been using re recently because the New Testament word you see all the time is, I say all the time, it's used a few times in the New Testament, in sample. And an in sample is like a pattern or or. Southerners call it a jig, where you do every, you, you use the same measurement, uh, the same uh, pattern that you draw a line or, or drill a hole with or whatever, so that it's the same all the time. Uh, so we have to basically, I told a young man I was marriage counseling with, and it's, it's hard to do marriage counseling with only one of the partners uh, but the son was uh, the, the the husband was here and the wife was at someplace else and they ended up sending him back to where she was. But anyway, he was always asking for advice, uh, and I really needed the ability to talk to both of them. But what I told him was about this is about being a husband is you have to lead in such a way that she wants to follow. And so every person's wife is different. And so things that I could say or, or, or uh, ask Denise, say to or ask of Denise, maybe you couldn't ask that of Jana. Maybe you couldn't say it that way to Jana. You understand? Everybody's uh, wife is different. Everybody's children are different. And we have to lead in such a way that they want to follow us, all right? That, I think that's one of the characteristics of a good leader as he or she, in some cases, can say things in such a way to motivate someone to follow them. Okay, Christ is the perfect example of, of, of a good leader. But uh, uh, then you have instruction. And look in Psalm 198 with me. Psalm, not 198, there's only 180-something Psalms. Psalm 119, verse 98. Uh, I want you to see uh, some teaching about instructions, okay, about how to instruct or how to teach your children. Uh, Psalm 198, I'll start in verse uh, 97, and we'll go through 105. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from, the, from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And if we teach the children, sometimes a child can be wise. I mean, you, you, I'm, I'm not going to call anybody by name, but you've all met somebody who's old enough. They should be wise, but they still make pretty stupid choices, all right? 
So when he says being wiser than the ancients, if an ancient, if, if an old person is not following the word of God, then they're really not wise, right? And so if we teach them that, we have to instruct them the word of God. And then we have warning. Uh, let's look at several proverbs here. Uh, warning. I'm trying to come in for a landing. It's, a, it's, a, it's not 1144, praise God. I'd be in trouble. It is uh, 9, 1044. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. That is a warning. Chapter 13, verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. You see, that's a warning. Uh, Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth to penury. Somebody tell me what penury is. That's exactly what penury is. Some people will talk you to death, but they won't ever do anything, right? And it's somebody who talks you to death can really get under your skin, right? But there's labor in doing something, but talking about it is not going to get anything accomplished. Uh, and sometimes people spend so much time talking about it that somebody else can come along and do the job that's being discussed Make an error, correct the error, and still have it completed before they finish talking about it. Okay? This is a, a warning that you give your children. Uh, Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Sometimes we want to fight at the first thing. All of us, every human being wants to fight at the first time somebody says something that we don't like. But oftentimes, a soft answer can turn that grief away. All right? This is warning your children. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. To me, it's remarkable that that, that instruction, that warning comes twice. Uh, Proverbs 17, 19, he loveth transgression that loveth strife. He that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. That's a warning. I'll give you one more and we're going to move on to the, to the next two and be done. Uh, Proverbs 19, verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. I think probably every teenager needs to hear that because oftentimes they want to sleep forever, right? But that is not going to get you anywhere. That tendeth to, to make you hungry. Ephesians 6, 4. Hmm, wonder what Ephesians 6, 4 says. I think it says, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? Let's get over there and see if I quoted it right. That's what it says. All right. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Uh, that is, um, pray without ceasing. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? Does that mean I need to just kneel down here and pray until I die of starvation? So what does it mean to pray without ceasing? That means to live my life without absences of prayer, yes. Without um, ceasing from prayer, without fasting from prayer. I mean, some of us, uh, treat prayer kind of like we treat the, the Word of God. Uh, um, I've told one story about Leslie Hall so many times, but I'm going to tell it one more time because our prayer lives are often like his Sunday school lesson. My dad, Leslie Hall, was a, a deputy sheriff when I was a boy in a church where my dad pastors. He was a huge guy, had what we called the, the horseshoe flat top, you know, where there's so little hair, he just had a little horseshoe right there. He had arms like a tree trunk. It always looked to me like his sleeve was just going to break if he flexed his arm, you know. And uh, one Sunday morning, my dad was speaking of his Sunday school lesson. And, boy, look, boy, I could tell Leslie's been studying. The papers were all curled around, you know. I could tell Leslie's been in it this week. I mean, he's really studied. And you could just see Leslie turn. Everybody was clean shaven back then. I mean, he turned red right here, and it just went all the way back. And finally, he raised his hand. He said, Preacher, I can't let you tell these people that story. Why? I mean, I'm proud of you. You've been studying. He said, 
but really it's all curled up because it's been laying on the dash of the cruiser and that hot sun coming through the glass curled it. I, I really hadn't looked at it since last week, all right? And sadly, that's the way some of us pray. But our kids need to see that we pray it, so that they can learn to pray without ceasing. And they're going to learn that by praying together with their mom and dad, by seeing mom and dad pray. Uh, help me, Lord. I need to shut up. It's, it's almost time to, to be done. I need to give you a 10-minute break. But I say of my wife pretty regularly that she is harder on herself than, than anybody I've ever met, Okay. And sometimes we all tend to that. And so we look and we hear a story about how a, one family prays together. And, of course, we all have seen the, the stickers and the wall mountings and all this. that says the family that prays together stays together. Do you know that's going to look differently in every home? And you can't compare your home to somebody else's home. You just need to be sure that your home is what God wants your home to be. Uh, for us... Uh, there was a time where we gathered the kids together in the morning before school, and I prayed for them, prayed with them before I went to work. We didn't have a, a lot of time to sit down and have a lengthy time. We just stood around, and Dad prayed with the family. Mom prayed with the family if Dad was at work or whatever. Uh, you know, putting food on the table took Dad away from home a lot, and so you kind of have to to complete one another in this process. But don't don't get all hard on yourself because will you read about this person who has this two-hour devotional every day with their kids you do the best that you can do you you do what god shows you to do and you'll never regret any time spent towards forming your children to be prepared to follow christ dear heavenly father i do thank you for all that have gathered out here i pray that uh, you would do what i cannot do and take this simple lesson and touch hearts and 